Every physical issue has emotional causes. I had a young boy, 13 years old, with migraines. This is a 13-year-old boy. He doesn't understand reincarnation. He just knows that every three weeks he's off school for several days with these agonizing headaches. We worked through all eight past lives in that one session his migraines were completely cured. You know, people would think all oh, this past life stuff is all nonsense and it's a bit weird and it's full of new agey things. No, this is th serious therapy, which helps serious issues. Hello, Steve. A warm welcome to the show. Great. Great to be here. Thanks, Yannicka. Thank you. I am so fortunate to have you come visiting me all the way from England. And you also have a masterclass in my membership that's called The Power of Past Life Regression. And you are the author of several books, uh, The Power of Past Life Regression and uh, Famous Past Lives. And that is going to be our topic for today. And I'm, I'm just going to put the books over there. I'm excited to speak about past lives and everything you've learned because you've had over 15,000 sessions with different clients. You have some amazing stories of how going uh, into hypnotherapy, taking people into hypnotherapy has really changed people's lives where they have found the root cause in their past lives. And we're going to go into this craziness and, you know, uh, tear it apart and find out what's really going on here and how why this is so magically working and healing people uh, but before we do uh, what made you start working as a hypnotherapist and being so passionate about past lives okay um, I fell into hypnotherapy by accident so I was director of a publishing company uh, which went bankrupt and I needed to do something quickly and my father um, had stopped smoking using hypnotherapy. And my father couldn't understand how this had worked for him. He'd smoked all his life and tried everything to stop smoking. And one day he went to see a hypnotherapist who laid him in a chair, relaxed him and told him that he didn't want cigarettes anymore. And my dad stopped smoking just like that. And he couldn't understand this. He's a scientist. His left brain didn't understand how this worked. So he started to read up about hypnotherapy and become, became so fascinated that he actually trained and started working as a hypnotherapist as a hobby. And so he said to me, why don't you try being a hypnotherapist? So I went and trained and um, I'm very lucky. It's like coming home into something that I, I should have been doing years earlier. Some people are natural therapists in the same way that some people are natural musicians or natural sports people. I'm a natural therapist. So it was just, it just felt like being at home really doing the work. Uh, so that's how I got started. And you're doing hypnotherapy sessions. And could you explain to those who are totally new to that, what it actually is? Okay. It's probably best to say what hypnosis isn't because people think hypnosis is a a coma state or a sleep state and it isn't hypnosis is really a relaxed state um, and it's a state that we all go into at least 24 times a day uh, when we daydream when we uh, go to a movie and we we focus on the movie that's a trance as we call it so trance is very natural and in hypnotherapy what we're doing we're using the trance state to aim to reprogram the deeper mind, the subconscious mind, the 99.999% of the mind that we don't usually use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and this is why hypnotherapy is so powerful and so radical, because we're using the engine room of the mind. And the, the subconscious is extraordinary. It's the seat of our emotions, the seat of our intuition, the seat of our creativity. It contains all the memories that go way back. Um, and if we're able to tap into the subconscious uh, in the correct way, the healing potential is, is so powerful, it's extraordinary. 
Uh, is it right to say that we are lowering the brain frequency? Uh, because I've heard that when we meditate, we are in alpha state mm -hmm. where our brain waves are moving slower and then we can go down to theta and delta. Yeah. Uh, and meditation and hypnosis are sisters. Very similar processes. So the only real difference is that in a trance, we tend to be more relaxed. Whereas in meditation, we tend to be more focused and more sitting, you could say. Uh, but meditation and hypnosis are very, very similar experiences. I usually find if anybody meditates regularly, usually they're actually pretty good at going into hypnosis. Um, but are we conscious when we go into these sessions and are in trance? Because I feel like trance, then I, I won't remember anything. No. And the trance is our jargon word. In English, we call it a jargon word. Um, trance mainly really is just a, an altered state of consciousness. It's where the mind just relaxes a little bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, people often expect to be in a sleep or a coma. It's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we remember everything that happens in a session. We're completely aware. Uh, we can hear sounds and noises outside the room, etc. And yet the conscious thinking mind has, has retreated a little bit. And it's allowed the subconscious to come through from the back part of the mind to the front part of the mm -hmm. mind. But we're still thinking, we're still analyzing, we're still aware. Um, it's not a coma, not at all. So uh, you are taking then people into these uh, past life regressions or hypnotherapy sessions and uh, they are there to heal different uh, traumas and ailments and diseases. Now I get curious about why are these in our past lives um, and w what kind of lives are they in like are there certain lives that influence uh, the life we have today because I assume that we've had thousands of lives yeah let me just give you a bigger picture of regression if I may first of all and then we'll if I can then look at the past lives more more uh, deeply so when we do regression in, in therapy, regression mean, means to go back into the past in our thoughts. So the regression model that we work in is that all of our issues as human beings come from locked in feelings and emotions from past traumas. And those traumas take place in three areas. In this life, and most of us carry baggage from our present lifetime in past lives and in our ancestors' lives, our forfedra. So for some of my clients, we work in all three areas. For sometimes we have to work in this life, releasing trauma, past lives and ancestors' lives. For other clients, we just work in one area. So that's the regression model. Mm -hmm. With past life regression, we're going back into specific past lives that contain traumas that are affecting us today. It's often death trauma. And so many of us carry uh, deaths, horrible deaths from previous lifetimes, mm -hmm. which are affecting us now. Not always, but about 60% of past life regression is releasing or healing death trauma. Mm -hmm. Now, Yes, we've lived many, many lifetimes. My belief is we've lived thousands of lives on this planet. We also live past lives on other planets as other life forms. We occasionally re will, in we, uh, will incarnate as an animal occasionally. So sometimes in my therapy sessions, I have clients who go into animal past lives. But, not very often, but... Um, it's nearly always the, the, the traumas in the past lives and especially death traumas that need to be released. So let's say we've lived a thousand of past lives. Well, all of those past lives do not ripen, that's the Buddhist term, in this present lifetime. Only certain lives will ripen in this, past, in this present life, our present life, and will affect us now. So we, it means that because if we had all of our thousands of past lives affecting us now, we wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. We'd be totally screwed up all day long. So it's only some of the past lives that, that are actually coming through in this lifetime that need to be worked on. Uh, do you think there is a... Uh, greater reason uh, that we are actually going into this life to have 
certain experiences you know we well, that's how i think that we plan our lives before we come down to this planet to learn certain things to experience maybe i want to learn about compassion but do you think we also come down to heal other past lives yes i think so and and we have um excuse me <clears throat> Um, yes, I think so. And we have, uh, we plan our lives out, but also we also have free will. So even before we come into this life, we may plan the life out, but it's it's a rough plan. It's not always very specific because other things can happen. Um, but I think the aim over many lives and the concept of reincarnation is that over many lifetimes we become higher beings we heal we grow as souls and oh and, and over those many lifetimes our vibrations raise and we become more pure beings and higher beings you could say so that eventually we don't have to come back and be reincarnated back on on planet asylum hmm. uh that was interesting what you mentioned that we might have other lives on other planets too which i really believe uh have that come up sometimes in a in a session that okay i was a pleiadian and that's where we need that's what we need to look at yes and curiously enough it's happening more now uh -huh. i mean barry might have been doing this for 31 years but in the last five years more and more clients are going into past lives where they've been other life forms on other planets and why it's happening now and it didn't happen 20 years ago i really don't know i think it's part of the the great awakening that's going on on planet earth i think so um but i have clients who yes they've been on the, in the coming from the pleiades and other uh, star systems i have one or two clients who feel that they are star seeds so they're now um as a result of the regression sessions they are connecting telepathically with these beings from their previous lives who are up there somewhere um in different energy forms and they are because they've released a lot of trauma in the present in this lifetime the more able to connect to these higher beings telepathically so they've got more of a the channel to them you could say and occasionally they will in a regression session start to channel messages from these other beings not very often but occasionally almost like the lowers can then did a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so but it's very curious that it's happening more now than it ever used to yeah. do in my sessions but but what has that taught you about extraterrestrial life when they start to explain how their existence yeah. is or has been i mean everything is happening now so maybe is or was <laughs> um the concept of time we don't truly understand so um for me i keep it very simple and the, the subconscious pref seems to work better if we if we look at time as linear that it just goes back um but there's a, there are different life forms my experience with the clients is that not all of these beings are, are beneficial to us mm -hmm. so there are some extraterrestrial races which are not beneficial and certainly i had a client uh, a few years ago in the states who um, went into a past life where she was a reptilian mm -hmm. in the past life but she said there are different reptilian races on our planet on our planet her planet oh. on the reptilian planet but she said most of us have been are nice but there's a there's a race of reptilians which are horrible and ruthless and they are down on planet earth and they are brutalizing us to keep us down to keep us in fear i.e her uh, her reptilian race so these the bad reptilians were overseeing the the rest of the reptilians are keeping them down so that the bad reptilians were in charge hmm. so but that's only come through in one session in all the other sessions the ets the extraterrestrials are very helpful and very beneficial hmm. uh, why would one um choose to um okay why did that soul choose to have a life there and there and then on earth it seems like to me that if you graduate to become 
a higher evolved being like a Platon or something like that or Arcturian, you didn't want to come back here perhaps wouldn't that be to go a step back <laughs> and they don't want to come back here they're very unhappy here and um <clears throat> sorry um no they don't want to come back here they're unhappy down here but it appears what maybe what they're aiming to do is to bring the energy of these higher beings down onto earth mm -hmm. so that they are transmitting this energy and bringing it through onto planet earth right now um but they they do struggle being down here some years ago i had a client in in norway who was um he relived a past life as an et from another planet whose spacecraft uh, crashed on earth and he survived but then he spent some time after that terrified down here on earth hiding away from from earthlings from human beings because he knew that if they found him he'd be in big trouble and he just kept saying what is wrong with them down here what's the matter with them it doesn't have to be like this over and over he said it doesn't have to be like this what is wrong with them and he just hid away all the time until eventually um, some of his colleagues came and found him from the other planet and they, it was like E.T. phone home mm -hmm. <laughs> phone home um, they came and found him and, they tr and he went back to his home planet with great relief um, so it, you know, the, I call this planet asylum down here <laughs> I really do there are higher ways of being but I think ultimately we've got to look at this over many lifetimes so we learn in each life so whether we're down on earth or whether we're on another planet each life is helping our soul to grow mm. to become uh all i can really say is a higher being mm. and that's the it's the plan over many lifetimes but i think as much as anything else sometimes we're down here bringing the energy down in order to help the energies on earth to be to rise up to higher yeah i i used to think uh, more in this way that i was separated from the extraterrestrials and they were you know far ahead and uh you know even like gods uh, for me in a way but when we look at time and that everything is happening at once and how channeling messages uh, a lot of channeling messages speaks about that we're one uh, I really feel that, well, another part of me can be uh, an Arcturian right now uh, because the soul is huge. I feel like that's coming through more and more that we can live uh, multiple lives actually at the same time that we are multidimensional beings. We can even be an insect on another planet mm. at the same time that the soul is huge, uh, which is confusing. And uh, I'm not sure how helpful it is either to my life right now, but it is interesting and fascinating. Um, I'm going to jump a little bit over to healing and what what how much can we heal in a session like this like what are the types of things we can heal every issue any issue that we have as a, as a human being comes from traumas in the past every issue so therefore uh, depression phobias anxieties physical illness cancer lack of confidence sexual issues relationship issues etc 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 any issue that we have as a human being in the regression model comes from traumas in the past this is very much in the um, louise hay model you know you can heal your life all physical illness has emotional causes so when we're working regression we aim to go back into those root causes release the trauma it isn't a fun process you know, there's a lot of tears. Sometimes the body shakes. Occasionally, my client will scream and yell and writhe. Occasionally, when they're in the experience, it's perfectly safe. As long as it's an energy from the past, it's not going to hurt them now. And as long as the therapist releases it fully, then the client gets better. Um, so every issue. So, for example, um, phobias. You know, there are phobias for everything. Um, the common phobias are spider phobia and flying and things. There is even a phobia for having peanut butter stuck on the roof of your mouth. 
and it's got a long name. <laughs> so somebody in the world has a pho somebody in the world will have a phobia of of microphones. You know, they may seem strange. All phobias are the same. And I generally find that about 60% at least come from deaths in past lives. Um, so a, a flying phobia, a lady came to me with flying phobia um, and she was terrified of flying and she kept putting herself through hell when she went on holiday. Mm. She didn't enjoy the holiday because she was worried about flying back home. The weeks leading up to the holiday were terrifying for her. She was anxious all the time. Mm. And we found in a past life, she was a, a male and she was an American Air Force pilot in the Second World War, flying out from the UK. Um, and the male got shot down as a pilot in the Second World War and died. So there's the, the, the connection, death, flying, flying now equals death. The subconscious puts two and two together. I died in a past life when I was flying and now I'm flying now. Oh, I'm going to die. And that's what the subconscious thinks. Another client with a flying phobia was a Vietnam soldier in the Vietnam War. And in this case, she didn't die, but she was um, in the back of a, a rackety old American airplane flying over the Vietnam jungle where the plane was shot down and the crash landed and they managed to get out and she didn't die or he didn't die but they were that the, first of all those are the terror of the crash so he thought he was going to die and then they were stuck in this jungle in the middle of nowhere and they had to find the way back to base so there was they were terrified all the time that we we're going to die at any moment so uh, phobia is a, a standard for past life regression uh, but depression, for example, mm. um, I went on an American psychological website recently. They said depression cannot be cured. Oh, yes, that's depressing. It, exactly. It can, but it can't be cured with the standard system, mm. which is to put tablets inside people that don't work. So depression is curable with regression because depression is caused by locked in anger. Mm -hmm. and um, that's the cause of depression, the emotional cause. So a lady came to me with severe depression, and I think in her case there were about eight past lives, all of which had different traumas. So the first past life, she was a woman, um, I think in about the early 1900s, and her young son died, and she couldn't come to terms with the death of the son, so she eventually killed herself. Mm -hmm. Uh, she went into another past life. And in this past life, she was a, a, a flower seller in Victorian London in the 1800s. Very poor, desperately trying to sell flowers to passers-by in the streets of London. And she was malnourished, getting more and more sick. And eventually she was so poorly that she dragged herself to a doctor's house somewhere in the middle of London one day, hoping that he would help her. And he took her in and he raped her and murdered her. So that was another horrible past life. She went into another past life where she was a coward in a battle. She was a male in a battle and she ran away from the battle. Um, and afterwards she actually did die. Uh, but she was very, he, the man was angry with himself for letting his colleagues down. So all of these things physical problems every physical issue has emotional causes i had a young boy 13 years old with migraines migraine mm -hmm. and um this is a 13 year old boy he doesn't understand reincarnation he just knows that every three weeks he's off school for several days with these agonizing headaches and his mom brought him and um his subconscious said there were eight past lives and he cleared all of those eight past lives in one hour, in one session. So he went into, and he, his mom was watching the session. At the end of the session, she had, she could, I just looked around. She was amazed at what was happening. He went into the, I can't remember the order, but he went into, let's say, the first past life, um, where he was a man whose wife was having an affair. And he was standing in a garden, worried about this, and his wife comes up behind him quietly with a spade and smacked him round the back of the head, boof, and he was dead. 
and he went straight into the next past life where he's a young boy at school and he kicked the school bully and the school bully got hold of him and started smacking his head against a wall. So his mum takes him to hospital and he dies on the way to hospital. He went into the next past life where he's a man in a bar somewhere and he gets into a fight and somebody punches him on the floor and then they're kicking him in the head dead and they went into the next past life where he was driving a car and a lorry came smashing into the side of the car and it was maybe the 1960s so he wasn't wearing a seat belt so his head went bash on the steering wheel dead and he went into the next past life <laughs> where he was an old man standing on some old stairs and wooden stairs and the wooden step fell apart and he fell to the floor and landed on his head dead and he went into the next past life. You know, it was one after another. And most migraine, most migraine is caused by deaths in past lives where there's been blows to the head. We worked through all eight past lives in that one session. His migraines were completely cured. Aww. So, I mean, this is... Uh, this is in interesting, but it's it's this is serious stuff. Mm. You know, people would think all oh, this past life stuff is all nonsense and it's a bit weird and it's full of new agey things. No, this is th serious therapy, which helps serious issues. I had a client in Oslo with lip cancer, mm. cancer of the lip, and we found there were. Two past lives causing the lip cancer. In one past life, she was a young African woman who was raped by an elder in the tribe and she could never then say anything because he was the elder in the tribe and, no, and people would have ostracised, would have thrown her out of the tribe. Also, she would then have never been able to get a man to get married if they knew she was raped. So she couldn't, she couldn't speak out. Lip cancer. In the second past life, she was a young noble woman in about, she was maybe 16 or 17 years old. And she was a typical teenage girl. And she had a male who was like a servant. And she was very flirty around him. You know the word flirty, flirtatious? Mm -hmm. And he got the wrong messages. Mm -hmm. And one day he kissed her. Oh, that should never, ever be done. He was just a servant. She was a member of nobility. And she was horrified. And when he saw how horrified she... He just got the wrong messages from her. He, he realised he'd done a very bad thing. Now, she knew she couldn't tell her father because her father would have killed him. But she told her sister, who told her father who had this young man killed. Oh. So it was about not speaking out. We cleared both of those past lives. She also had quite a lot of kinesiology, which is a wonderful therapy process. And she did a lot more work on herself. She cleaned a diet up. Several months later, she emailed me to say, I've just had the scans. They cannot find, there's not a trace of cancer in my body. Mm. So emotional causes to cancer. Every issue has emotional causes. Wow, this is really fascinating. Uh, I love hearing those stories. Uh, and I get curious because I would think that when we die, uh, we go to the other side and everything gets healed. Everything gets cleared, you know, through our life review. Uh, maybe we meet our guides and we sort of heal what needs to be healed. But it seems like we bring back to Earth like the same stuff. Have you thought about that too? Mm. I don't specialize in in-between life work, but I've had a lot of clients over the years who after the death experience in a past life have naturally gone into into spirit to experience what happens in spirit and certainly yes there is this process where uh, they meet guides or elders who help them to understand the life they've just lived and also understand where they've gone wrong where we've gone wrong in that life with the mistakes we've made um, so that we can sort of start to pick up next time where we went wrong um, but it, it when we die we let go of the earthly body and the pain body you could say I mean Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body mm -hmm. we let go of the pain body and so there's great relief and an amazing sense of calmness but the 
emotional stuff is still there somewhere and it will come back sooner or later in some future life if we don't work on it now. All right, so it is actually crucial that we work on our issues now in this present life. Yes, and I think now on Earth is a fascinating time. I'm sure there is this great awakening going on. And um, when I look at the last 31 years, past life regression was not really looked at. Nowadays, it's becoming much more mainstream and people are prepared to look at the, the real benefits of it. And I think a lot of people now are healing for the future. Um, and that's for what is going to happen on Earth, maybe in the future or future lifetimes. Uh, but I think it's so important to heal our stuff now. Work on your stuff now. Mm -hmm. Don't wait because you, it, you will take it with you and it will only keep coming back in future lives. And in English, we say it bites you on the bum. Mm -hmm. Uh, how could I know if um, something I'm struggling with is coming from this life or a past life? The subconscious knows. Um, the subconscious is this all-wise, all-knowing part of you. I actually believe, nowadays I believe we all have a higher self. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the subconscious either is the higher self or is intimately connected to the higher self. And it knows everything. Now, I... Um, I've created a regression system, which I train therapists in around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, with this regression system, we use a hypnotic technique. We call it an idiomotor response, which is where when my client is in trance, I ask the subconscious to take control of a finger. And the finger becomes very light and free. It's almost like a balloon. Mm -hmm. And what I ask the subconscious to do then is to signal yes or no with using the finger. So if I ask the subconscious a question, it wants to say yes, the finger comes up. If the subconscious wants to say no, the finger stays flat. And then I'm just asking yes, no questions of the subconscious because I don't know. I'm not clairvoyant. Well, we may be clairvoyant, but I'm, I don't play with that. Um, but my subcon the client's subconscious knows. So I will... If, let's say I have a client who comes with a lack of confidence mm. and lack of confidence is caused by fear. It's always caused by locked in fear. Mm. And I say to my subco the client's subconscious, have there been any traumas or significant emotional events in your present lifetime, in this present life, connected to causing the lack of confidence? And it may say yes. Then I'll ask, whereabouts in this life? Is it in your adult life, your adolescence, your childhood? Birth trauma, because we do a lot of rebirthing. We often bring, we carry birth trauma through our lives, from our births, so we can rebirth and release that birth trauma. And the time in the womb before birth. So some of my clients have womb trauma. Are there any past life causes? It may say yes. I'll then say, how many past lives? One, two, three, four, it may go to four. Mm. So when we'll know, are there any ancestral lives? Um, have you inherited trauma from any of your ancestors, your four federa? Mm. And it may say yes. Mm. So we then have a diagnosis of exactly where we need to go. Mm. So the subconscious knows everything. Mm. And if we can ask it the right questions, it will tell us. Mm. That makes sense. Um, what, what is the story that has amazed you the most when it comes to healing something? Gosh, there's been so many. <laughs> that sounds really clever, and I don't mean to be arrogant, but there have been so many incredible experiences. Um, perhaps one which was very dramatic. Not all sessions are dramatic. We do see a lot of emotion, a lot of crying in the sessions, and sometimes the body shakes and jerks. Mm. But... I had one lady who came with severe back pain and her lower back pain was it had been very bad for years. Um, she'd even had surgery on the pain and they took her into the hospital. <coughs> Sorry. They took her into the hospital, they opened her up and they couldn't find anything. There was nothing there. So they stitched her back up again and sent her home with painkillers. Mm. And of course the back pain got worse um, and she couldn't then go to the gym, so she could put weight on. So then she ate more food and she put more, she was depressed. It was a really bad thing. And I asked her subconscious, 
what was the cause of the back pain and it's nearly always with a mystery pain it's nearly always past life and it said there were four past lives <clears throat> and i guided her into the first past life which was the big one and she went into a past life in the second world war as a nazi soldier a young nazi soldier and this young male nazi soldier uh, was the member of a team of Nazis that were going around Europe stealing art treasures and shipping them back to Berlin. But things went wrong and he then got sent to the Russian front because the Nazi war machine was struggling. And he was terrified, absolutely terrified. They were, they were in the snow and the Russians were fighting and, and this young man, it was just, it was a horrible experience. And then things went quiet. And one day, when they were stuck in the snow, about 40 miles from Moscow, he got told that there was an, an icon, a Russian icon, an art icon, in a church in a village about a mile away that the Nazis, um, it was it, they'd overrun the, the village, so it was friendly, they thought. So this young man then thought, whoa, Maybe we can steal this uh, icon from the church and get it back to Berlin. And he then made the biggest mistake of his life. So he jumped on a motorbike and without an escort on his own, he drove to the village. Now, picture the session. My client is laid in trance and she's just talking about what she's experiencing. So, and she said, I've arrived at the village. I get off the motorbike. And I found the church. It's completely deserted. There's only wooden shacks here. It's a very poor village. There's nobody around. I'm walking up to the church and suddenly she screamed and she jumped about a meter in the air and then crashed down. <laughs> and she was coughing and choking and gasping. So what's happened? I've been shot. I've been shot. She said, I've been shot. And she took 20 minutes to die. Oh. So I just had to let her die. Um, and then she died. Now, one of the features of this regression therapy, I said at the start, if this work is done correctly, it heals. We have to go back through the trauma sometimes more than once. So she had to go back through and get shot again. And the second time she jumped, not quite a meter, and it took 10 minutes to die. The third time she went back through the death, oh. she jumped about a few inches and it took five minutes to die. The fourth time she went back through, when she, when the bullet hit her, she went, ah, and that was it. And that had cleared that death. It had released it. Now, at the end of the session, she was amazed because she wasn't into reincarnation. She was a, she was a magistrate, a judge in the legal system. Oh. So all this reincarnation stuff, what the hell is all this, this about? But immediately the back pain was a lot better. We cleared the other three past lives very quickly and that back pain was completely cured, completely cured. Within weeks, she was back at the gym. She got her life back. Um, she felt fantastic again. So that's on one of many, many physical problems that I've worked with. But that was always fascinating because the reaction, when that bullet went in and she screamed and yelled, I mean, I jumped. My, I hit the head on the ceiling because I wasn't expecting it. Uh, but it was the healing was fantastic. Okay, so, so do they need really to go through that trauma again? Isn't that quite um, difficult to go through? Yeah. And that's the process. I'm oh. sorry to say, and I, you know, some therapists, some people don't like this because they believe we shouldn't have to do that. No, it's no pain, no gain. You have to work with this to release it fully. It works, it, it releases it at such a deep level. Um, it's This is not a, a surface level. Mm -hmm. You know, some people do play with past lives. They'll work in past lives, but they tend to play at it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that can actually make people worse. It can make the clients worse. They have to get into that deep kinesthetic release. In most cases, I will say that some of the past life regression is actually just getting um, an understanding from the past life. 
It isn't always about trauma release, mm. but mostly it is trauma release. So sometimes if we can understand what has happened in a past life, it makes sense of what's, why our life is like it is now. Right, just the awareness of it. Yeah. Mm. Freud talked a lot about insights. A lot of Freudian therapy was insights. Get an insight, that's the therapy. So, for example, it may be somebody is having a relationship issue. Um, you know, somebody may say, I, I, my mother and I, we never get on. We have a terrible time. She's always attacking me and I'm very angry with her. Mm. And we go back and find it's all from a past life where they've been together as husband and wife and we're always angry with each other. And they've brought that energy into this life. And when the client becomes aware of that, this just gets better. Hmm. So, so so it can be re-traumatizing to go through a trauma? As long as it's released, it isn't re-traumatizing. Mm-hmm. So you, this is the, the feature of regression therapy. You have to go back through it several times to mm-hmm. fully release the energy. Then it's healed. Mm-hmm. If you just go back through it once, it may not be healed. Mm-hmm. So that's when I train therapists mm-hmm. in this regression work. You know, don't get frightened, I say. You know, your client may go through something which is dramatic, mm-hmm. But if it's dramatic, you will get them better as long as you keep taking them back through to release that energy. Mm. When it's cleared, it's cleared and they will heal. Um, I recently interviewed uh, a guy who had a near-death ex- uh, experience. He was a musician and he said that some of the downloads he received on the other side was that um, we don't experience painful deaths because the soul is taken out of the body uh, right before you die. Uh, what do you think about that? In my experience, that's not the case. Mm. There are cases where that does happen. There are definitely cases. I've certainly had clients who have been, um, I had a client recently who was being uh, killed as a witch. I've had many, many hundreds of clients over the years who in past lives were Mm. killed as witches. They weren't witches, of course. They were just herbal healers or people who were different. I would. Probably if that was today, I would have been killed as a witch. I think so. <laughs> Many of us. <laughs> Many. So um, I do find a lot of people who are into spiritual issues, as you are, uh, have, have had past lives mm. as witches. Mm. But certainly one client, she was, they had this, in England, they used to have a ducking stool where they'd sit them in a in a contraption and put them under water. Yeah. Um, and if they lived... Life. If they lived, they were witches. If they died, they weren't witches. I mean, oh. um, but bef- just as she went under the water, she just went. She just went out of her body and died. There was no pain. Mm. So it does sometimes happen uh, that that does sometimes happen, but not very often. Very often we have to experience that de- there is death trauma. I actually read about this in a book by Dolores Cannon because she's doing or was doing uh, what you are doing, a lot of the same work. And she explained it like this. One of her clients explained that if the soul wants to experience the pain, like that it's actually a desire for the soul to experience how is it like dying a horrible death, then that is allowed. But you can also move out of the body and before you die. And that just makes sense to me and she also had an example a similar like yours there was a woman who was um convicted as a uh, so as a witch and she was burnt um and then right before you know she started dying she moved out of her body but her body was screaming and that was so interesting the client was saying my body screaming and she when she was hovering outside her body she was like oh, why um, is my body screaming? I don't want it to scream because all those men around there, the priests and everything, they were, uh, what is the expression? They were enjoying her suffering. Mm. And she got so mad in spirit that they were enjoying because she was like, I'm good. I don't feel anything I'm outside my body. But then she explained that my body was screaming. And I thought that was interesting. And I started thinking, does the body has its own consciousness? Uh, because we see a fish, you know, after a fish has been killed, it still has cramps. And we're just saying, oh, the fish has cramps. But, well, but it's dead. Why does it has cramps? It's still some sort of 
life in it. Mm. Yeah, just yeah. a thought. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we have all the answers. And I think everybody has different learnings to to experience as well for themselves. So uh, I don't think there's one way of doing things. Mm. So uh, I think there are many different experiences that we have to have over many lifetimes. Mm. But talking about a fish, do you want to hear my fish story? Sure. So, <laughs> one of my colleagues, one of my team, my therapy team in the UK, um, I did a regression with her when she was working on a phobia uh, of deep, dark water. Mm -hmm. And she went back into a past life in which she was a fish that was just caught by a fisherman and thrown onto the boat of the, the deck of the She boat. was a fish. She was a fish. And as she was caught and thrown onto the deck of the boat, and again, she was writhing and crying and moving around. And then she was just let to, left to die. And the trauma was not the death, although she looked as if it was traumatic because she was thrashing around. The trauma was that she was worthless in the eyes of this fisherman. He just threw her on the deck and left her to die. Um, and that was the trauma. So... We went back into that. In fact, on my YouTube channel, Hypno for All, we've actually videoed, I've videoed past life sessions, live regressions with her. And we went back into that again a second time. And in this second session, she actually, as she was dying, the fisherman's young son was standing there on the boat. And he was, he was full of compassion for her as she was dying and that was the healing that actually healed that this little boy had some compassion for her as, as she was healing and children do have this natural compassion for animals of course wow that's so amazing i'm thinking you know insects and all that and ants that i'm constantly stepping on when i'm jogging you know like oh mm. we kill all the time <laughs> well there's a there's a um, a, a sect which I think was similar to a Buddhist sect called uh, the Jains, the Jains, and they they believe we shouldn't kill anything. They actually, where they're walking, they will always watch where they're walking. Um, if they move, if they're laid on a night on the floor um, in asleep, they train themselves to wake up, and before they turn over, they brush the floor to make sure there's no insects there before they turn over. Oh. So I was a Buddhist for many years, uh, deeply into, into Buddhism, and uh, we used to be taught mantras. So there's a, there's a mantra that you can say, which I sometimes say if I'm driving, driving in the car and I can see things, that, you know, moths being killed and insects. Right. And so I just say the mantra from my heart, oh. um, which is a form of apology, really. Oh. That's beautiful. I really like Avatar, you know, when they they are doing the kill, they do it in such an honorable way. Yes. And I wish we could do that in our world. <laughs> I think, I mean, I, um, I, before I eat any meat, I go through a little ritual for it where I apologize to it. I thank it for giving its life for me. Um, and I say some mantras for it. Mm. And that's just a habit I've got into every meal now. <laughs> That's beautiful and inspiring. Is there anything you want to add about past life regression that you feel is very crucial to get across? I think the evidence for past life is very real if people would really look at it and research it. Mm -hmm. And although most of my work is about releasing trauma and healing, I've had some clients over the years who have been in past lives where at the end, during the session, they have come up with information which they would not know in any way, shape, or form if they, unless they'd been in that past life. Another story? Have we got time? Yeah, and I just got another question. You know, how do you know if uh, if they're not just making it up? I have a client in in Seattle, a lovely gentleman in Seattle in the states, and he went into a past life where he was living in England in the 1680s. And he said, I'm living, it's about 1685. And he said, I'm living in a, um, a, a county called Berkshire. In English, we say Berkshire. He said Berkshire. In fact, he said, I live in a little village called Upper Bucklebury. 
Really? Okay. But he said, the king is King Charles. And he said, but I'm a member of a religious group and we're being persecuted. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave England and travel to the States. We're setting up some communities there. And he said, as I'm leaving Upper Bucklebury, he said, I'm a carpenter here. And the church here is St. Mary's. I'm leaving the church. He said, it's not my church, but I have a connection to it. It's a big white building. St. Mary's Church. He said, I'm walking to Bristol and after a few weeks I get a, uh, a ship to the United States and we're setting up some uh, communities there. He was a Quaker. And the ship that he travelled on was called the Bristol, he said, it's the Bristol Merchant. This old ship is called the Bristol Merchant. So we worked through that life and afterwards I'm googling away and guess what I find? In Berkshire, there is a village called Upper Bucklebury. Hmm. I've lived in England virtually all of my life, apart from a few years in Norway. <laughs> I've never heard of that place before. And guess what the name of the church in Upper Bucklebury is? St. Mary's. And then I did more Googling, and one of the main ships that was taking Quakers from the UK to the States was the Bristol Merchant. And he didn't know this? No way. How would he know that? Mm. He lives in Seattle. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's not the sort of information you would ever know or ever find anywhere. And certainly in my book, Famous Past Lives, where I've had some people who have been very famous in previous lifetimes, um, those people came up with specific information which they would never have known. I had to go looking in history books mm. and it was all there. Mm. So this is real stuff. Mm. And for me, I'm a passionate advocate of the reality of, of past lifetimes. Uh, but speaking of these famous past lives, why is that that so many people feel like I've been Alexander the Great? It's ego in most cases. They, e ego? Ego. They can't just be a peasant uh, or a, a farmer. It's a big ego very often. Obviously, some people will have been uh, those famous people. Um, but in most cases, it's somebody who really just feel that it's a big ego. So it's not true? In most cases, I don't believe it's true. Okay. But in some cases, it is true. And I'm working with a client in Canada at the moment, and it looks like, and I'm pretty damn sure this is real, that she's the reincarnation of Alexandra, the wife of Tsar Nicholas II, mm. who died with all of her family at the start of the Russian Revolution. Mm. And we've done a lot of sessions and she do, she's never read any books on Alexandra, mm. but the information is true and a really miserable life. Another perspective on that, that Dolores, again, because I read her books or some of her books, uh, uh, told uh, in the book is that a soul, again, can be divided in multiple parts. So multiple souls can be have been one person. Yes. Mm. My belief with the big historical person, people who are big in history, the big people, the Alexander the Greats, the kings and queens, mm -hmm. my belief is that their soul is so big that it's made up of mm -hmm. several smaller souls, you could mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, uh, this is why mm -hmm. several people can claim to be the reincarnation of one famous mm -hmm. person. Um, so that's my sense on that. Fascinating. <laughs> All right. Um, there are three questions that I ask all my guests. And the first one is, what is self-love to you? Gosh. Mm -hmm. um, I do my best to be as kind as possible to all human beings. And therefore, for me, being kind to myself in as many ways as possible is, is what I would say really is self-love and um, doing my best to heal because I again I have therapy I believe that we all have th we all need therapy so I believe that too yeah we really do and especially us therapists yeah. be very surprised how few therapists have therapy mm -hmm. so for me caring for myself is means having therapy and growing uh, releasing the pain of the past in order to become more balanced now mm -hmm. That for me, maybe is self-love. And what is happiness to you? Sitting, playing my classical guitar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> brings me so much joy. Oh. <laughs> it really does. 
Lovely. And what is the deeper meaning of life from your perspective? To grow our souls and to um, to develop compassion and also to become less egotistical mm. and so to become aware that everything just is. So for me, the deeper meaning of life is to live a life where there's no good, there's no bad, there's no right, there's no wrong, there just is. Mm. And this is called non-duality or oneness. Mm. And if we're able to live with that in that oneness, that for me is 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 the ultimate deep depth of deep meaning of life. Mm. It's been so inspiring having you visiting me here uh, near uh, Oslo in Norway. And uh, people can, of course, um, watch a class with you uh, in my own membership because you are one of my masterclass teachers. Uh, and there Steve ha has a class called uh, The Power of Past Life Regressions. And you can read all about the Wisdom for North membership below where we have tons of masterclasses. It's a really wonderful spiritual community. And I also wanted to ask you uh, what other things can you offer? I know you have tons of clients uh, and also a YouTube channel and you're doing so many things. So where can people reach you? Uh, my website is steveburgesshypnosis.com. steveburgesshypnosis.com. Um, my Facebook is The Power of Past Life Regression. Um, and the most important thing for me is my YouTube channel, which is a free YouTube channel with free hypnotherapy recordings. And that's called Hypno for All. H-Y-P-N-O, the number 4-A-L-L. -L. Uh, but my books are available on Amazon and Audible. Um, and uh, yeah, I do all my client sessions online. So uh, people get hold of me through steveburgesshypnosis.com. Thank you so much, Steve. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. It's been wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>